There we go. All right. Now we're cooking. Well, sorry for the delay, everyone, but it gave a few people a couple extra minutes to log in. So today is May the 4th, 2022. So for all of my Star Wars fans out there, May the 4th be with you. And tomorrow, Revenge of the 5th. Ha ha ha. All right, so this is the forensic medicine orientation. So if this general program description doesn't sound right to you, if you don't uh, think you're in the right place to learn about the application of medical sciences to crime scene investigation, uh, probably want to drop off the call right now. Yes, Bernard, ha ha. Nice Star Wars reference, we love it. So I am your program director, Dr. Lyra Sutton. My email address is below and you will be getting a lot of correspondence from me. I am also the um, instructor for a couple of the core classes that you guys will be taking throughout the course of your program, but I am also the program director and your primary academic advisor. So make sure you bookmark my UFL email address so that we can stay in touch throughout the course of your progress through the program. So one of the most important components that we need to talk about today in orientation is e-learning and how you access your courses. So this is offered through Canvas, which is our e-learning system, and you access it with your Gator link. So you log in right here, you log into e-learning, you'll put in your username and password, that's your Gator link username, and we'll ask you to authenticate. So that's just another step to make sure that everything is secure. Once you authenticate that, it will log you in and then you will see your Canvas dashboard. Now my dashboard is gonna look a little bit different than yours because I have access to every course in the program as well as some of our continuing education courses, but you'll see something that looks a little bit like this. You'll see your course number, the date of enrollment, and then you see this nice tab bar on the left. We'll talk a little bit more about the components of this later on in the slides. One of the first things that every student needs to make sure they have access to is the general program shell. And this is something that's not done by term. It's, it's an ongoing shell that every student in the program should have access to. And that's right here. So it should be the first thing on your Canvas dashboard. And so you'll see this. This is a great portal to connect with your other students in the program. You have access to the People tab, which will show you all of the currently enrolled students in the program. Uh, it also gives you the opportunity to send messages to me, to the other students that aren't um, directly associated with an ongoing course. It's also a place where I can post program-wide announcements. So this is something you're going to want to make sure you're checking regularly. You'll see messages mostly from me, but sometimes also from our administrative team. And so make sure you are checking this program-wide course shell on a regular basis. Within the forensic medicine program, we have two tracks. We have the thesis track and the non-thesis track. And it's important for students to really start thinking about which track is right for them during their first semester in the program. The thesis track is very intense, and it's really only recommended for students who are either planning to pursue a doctoral degree, whether that's a PhD, uh, med school, or future work in academia, such as a research-based position. So if you're really interested in research and doing scientific writing and publication, the thesis track might be right for you. Otherwise, we recommend most of our students focus on the non-thesis track because this allows students to take more elective courses in the program. And there's a section on our website that shows what your path would look like either on a non-thesis or a thesis track. One very important point that I want to make sure all of our students understand is if you're considering the thesis track, you need to communicate that to me by the end of your first semester. And that also includes a potential topic. So you, the student, need to send me a proposal of what thesis topic you'd like to research. We'll work together on making sure it's a good fit for a thesis. 
make sure that your long-term education and career goals are the right fit for the thesis. And then starting in a couple of weeks, there will be another shell that looks similar to the program-wide shell that thesis students only will have access to. And so that will be a way that we can communicate about the thesis. So spend some time on our website and, and kind of decide which track you think is right for you. And let me know that early on. The more advanced notice we have about a thesis, the better off we're all going to be. In addition to our online courses, which is our core classes and our online electives, and we offer a lot of varied electives, we also offer something really unique through our program, and that is lab classes. These are offered in a different format than our online courses because they are not offered throughout a 15 week semester. They are one week long, they're in person, and they're local. So most of our lab classes are offered here in Gainesville on a University of Florida campus. But our crime scene lab is offered at another uh, state of Florida college campus, and that's in Daytona Beach. So we typically offer that class during the spring. So if you'd like the opportunity to use your spring break and come to Florida and take a lab class, we strongly encourage all of our students to take at least one lab class during their time in our program because it gives you that hands-on in-person opportunity to learn and practice these techniques that you have seen and heard about in the online course and actually spend time doing them. It also gives you a great opportunity to work side by side with your peers and your instructors and learn these new tips and techniques that you can apply to the job market. You also have the opportunity to take electives from other courses and other programs in the Maple Center. So I'm gonna link you to the Maple Center website. That's maples-center.ufl.edu. And you will all be getting a copy of this presentation with all of the links. So no need to worry about bookmarking them all right now. But the Maple Center has multiple graduate programs that offer electives that might be of interest to you. So if you find a course within any one of the Maple Center programs, so for example, uh, you know, you might find skeletal trauma analysis very interesting. Yes, it's a VME course, so it's not directly listed through the forensic medicine program, but it's a Maple Center course. So we do allow you to take those courses as electives towards your forensic medicine degree. So if that's something that interests you, or if you're considering a dual degree or a certificate in one of our other programs while you're earning your master's in forensic medicine, communicate with us, let us know that via email, and we can help you on the best way to make that happen. Now, some critical points for success. You have two inboxes that you are expected to check on a regular basis. We recommend students check their email both canvas and regular uf email at least once per day because that's how we're going to reach out to you for critical program and course communication so the first one is your canvas inbox and so you'll access that again the same way that you access your courses which is through the canvas dashboard so you see this bar here on the left, it's this blue bar and you see something labeled inbox. That is your Canvas inbox. You'll have the ability to see all sorts of correspondence from your students. And right here is how you can communicate based on course. So if you want to send a message through the general shell, that would be here, right? Thesis students is here. The general forensic medicine program shell is here. You have the opportunity to message all teachers, everyone, students. So this is a method we want you to use to communicate about your courses specifically. So if you have a question about an assignment or you have a question about a quiz question or you need an extension, please message us through the Canvas inbox. That allows our instructors to know which course you're asking about, which section you're enrolled in, and it really helps to streamline course-specific communications. 
Next is your UF email, and that's separate from your Canvas inbox. There is an option, and I encourage all students to do this, where your Canvas inbox does forward to your main UF mail, but that's Gator Mail. So you log into your Gator Mail again using your UF Gator Link login, and that takes you to Outlook. So you'll see here, let me see if I can find a, a recent email that's forwarded from a student. So here's an example, right? You see this comes from Canvas, it's forwarded here, right? And that just shows you your general Canvas emails. It also shows you any of your main UF email. So that's where our administrative team will reach out to you. That's where our registration team will reach out to you for sending your registration links each semester. Uh, the UF Graduate School will also reach out to you through that email as well. If we have any issues with registration holds on your account, that main UF email that you access here through the Gator link, through the Outlook, that's where we will reach out to you. So make sure you're checking both of these. They serve different purposes, so make sure you check both of them. We also have a great resource that's available to all UF students, and that's the UF library system. And I'm not going to spend too much time going over this with you, um, but we recommend that you spend some time familiarizing yourself with the UF library, and you need to log in either through the VPN, that's what's recommended, or the proxy server. And the way that that works is it makes the UF library system think that you're on campus. The benefit of that is it gives you access to all of the journal articles, all of the materials that are on the UF library system completely for free. So make sure before you try to use the library system, you're either logged in to the VPN or to the proxy server, and that way you won't have to pay to access the articles. All of your assignments, whether those are module written assignments, midterm essays, require that you use academic sources. And that's not websites. That's not anything you're going to be able to access through a Google search. So you need to spend some time on the library. And the one search is a great method because it allows you to search by keyword, by the catalog in general. You can do advanced searches through this. And that gives you the opportunity to find academic sources that are appropriate for use in your assignments, peer reviewed journal articles, book chapters, and professionally relevant resources to use in your assignments. So make sure you use the libraries for all of your assignments and your exams. You are, even though you're a distance education student, you are still a UF student, the same as any student would be on campus. And that means you have to follow all of the same policies and procedures that are expected of any UF student. And all of those are detailed in the UF Graduate Student Handbook. That details all of our university policies that every UF student is required to follow. So that's everything from plagiarism and academic honesty to grading policies, planning for your graduation, the UF honor code. There is a fun little statement when you read through this that says rules are not waived for ignorance. And that's really important. I want every student to make sure they understand that not being familiar with the graduate handbook or not being aware of a policy doesn't mean it doesn't still apply to you. It's your responsibility as a graduate student to be aware of these policies, be familiar with them, and make sure you abide by them because it also details the sanctions that may go in, uh, may go into place and, and, and may be levied against you if you violate any of these policies. So make sure you're familiar with all of this, academic honesty being a really big one. So other than the policies and procedures and possible sanctions for violating them. That's that's the not so fun stuff we have to talk about. Now we get to talk about the perks of being a UF student. So in addition to having to follow all the rules, you also get all the same perks and benefits and assets of being a UF student, even though you're distance ed. One of the best ones is access to a student ID card. That's your official UF ID card, and you can get all kinds of discounts and student perks. So make sure that you 
follow this link and, and get a UFID card. You can upload a picture, they'll send you the card in the mail. And that lets you be able to show your student ID and get access to all the perks and benefits of being a student and student status. If you come to Gainesville for graduation or lab classes or football games, you are able to ride any of the buses within Gainesville on campus and otherwise completely for free with your UFID card. You get discounts on software, discounts on uh, university related attire. So all kinds of fun things that you get by having your student ID card. I also want to highlight the help desk and we all know that technology just like we experienced at the start of our orientation this morning technology is great when it works, but sometimes it doesn't work very well, sometimes you have glitches sometimes you have technical difficulties and that's just one of the things we encounter when we do distance learning so that's why we have the UF help desk right here is what I want to hire. Highlight, not higher. Goodness. The UF Help Desk is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that is a phenomenal resource because many of you are not necessarily working on the UF Eastern Time Zone business hour schedule that your instructors might be. So if you're an international student, maybe you work night shift and you are only available to work through your courses at three o'clock in the morning and, and you're encountering technical difficulty. No need to worry. You call this number right here and a real person will pick up the phone and talk you through your issue. If you're someone who doesn't love talking on the phone, and that's fine, we also have email and chat options. So helpdesk at ufl.edu. You can email them what your issue is and they will get back to you with a ticket number, or you can do a live chat with a, an IT specialist. The ticket number is very important, and that's something that we need for our documentation. If you run into an issue with a quiz or a test, if you have an internet failure, your Canvas logs you out, if you run into any kind of technical difficulties that make it difficult for you to complete an assignment or an assessment, we need you to contact the help desk and get a ticket number. That allows us to trace the issue and associate it with whatever technical difficulty you experienced so that we can get you back on track, whether that's allowing you a second attempt at a quiz. Um, it, it depends on the type of issue you experience, but do make sure that any technical difficulties you have, you contact the help desk and get that ticket number issued so that we can document it. Here are some other resources, and we won't really spend time talking about them here during this orientation, but do make sure that you look through them and take advantage of all of the free opportunities that are available to you as a UF student. The Career Connection Center that posts job opportunities, the Professional Development Center, LinkedIn Learning, and all of this is completely free. Proficiencies, skills that you may want to get better at, something like uh, working through Excel spreadsheets and learning how to harness the power of Microsoft Excel to make your organization management easier. Let's say you want access to software licensing, Adobe, Photoshop, uh, anything like that. You can have either for free or at a steep discount using your UF student access. So software and um, professional development learning courses are all available to you. So that's a lot to digest. And it's very important when you're an online student to treat this just like you would any other learning opportunity. You want to establish dedicated space and dedicated time. We recommend students have a space that isn't necessarily their couch or their bed. I know it's tempting to lay in your bed and use your laptop and try to work through your courses, but that's not the best way to be the most successful in your courses. So have a dedicated space, whether that's just a specific seat at your dining room table or uh, an area of your home that's dedicated as your home office. You can see here, this is my cat, Quincy, working with me at my home office in my dedicated study space that I have. And he is operating on the perfect example of laying out all of your resources, taking notes, being organized, and making sure that you're staying on track to optimize your success for learning. 
You also might want to check out the UF online resources page and that shows some tips and tricks for how you can get more involved with UF online learning, not only in the forensic medicine program, but with all UF distance learning students as well. So it just talks about some ideas. And if you're having any difficulties, let's say maybe you're feeling a little bit isolated and you want some ideas for how to feel more connected, you can call this number and talk to them and they can give you some advice as well. Now I'm going to stop talking for a minute and turn it over to our Director of Academic Support Services. This is someone you will be spending a lot of time communicating with throughout the course of your degree. So be familiar with him, recognize his name, and he's a fabulous resource alongside another member of our administrative team. So that is Narsi Ramachandran and Rachel Moore, both of whom are on this call. So I'll turn it over to Narsi. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on which part of the globe you're in. Welcome and thank you for making time to join us this um, exciting orientation day. I know a lot of you have some burning questions. We'll save all that towards the very end. But also want to acknowledge that we are rapidly increasing our uh, registration attention. We were really um, pressed, hard pressed for the deadlines for spring 22 graduations. We just wrapped up all that yesterday and now we are devoting almost 200% of our attention to getting all the registrations caught up. The primary reason that we hold all the re registrations for our distance education programs that is controlled by our office is to make sure that you guys are registered for the right courses and we do not have any surprise events towards the end where, oh, I didn't know I had to take this four course or I took a different course and that may not apply and so on and so forth. So all the registrations, if you've already submitted them, it should get processed this week. So please be a bit more patient and we'll get you added. Uh, but if you've not submitted your registration request, please uh, write to us or our uh, recruitment team which is masters at DSC, and we'll get you that special link. And those email addresses will be shared towards the end of uh, this presentation. And you'll also get the slide deck that we are using for the day. Uh, that said, the add drop dates are very critical uh, because if you fail to drop a particular class before the add drop deadline, there are other uh, policies and uh, mechanisms involved for any emergency situation. We'll talk about it further down the road. But typically you have about five to uh, seven days after the start of the term to drop a class depending on your review, your work schedule, your life schedule, whatever be the case, you can make those adjustments. As a rule of thumb, it is best to plan for, say you're taking one class, which is a three credit class, you need to allocate at least nine hours of personal study time at the minimum to focus completely on that class. So if you're a working professional, apart from what Dr. Sutton recommended to have a dedicated space and time and things like that, make sure you also accommodate for nine hours of your work-life balance for one particular class. So as a working professional, it may be best to start out with one class, but if your schedule is very flexible and you can manage, maybe two classes would be doable, but not more than that. For full-time students, you can take up to three classes a semester, but keep in mind that is being a full-time student. So uh, please adhere to that. And if you're planning to seek the federal financial aid, you have to meet their guidelines for the number of credits required, which would be six credits during fall and spring. And in summer, there's a little bit of flexibility. It is four credits, but we technically don't have four credits. So you may do one elective, which is like the literature review or something, but further down the road or plan for two classes the summer term as well to meet the federal financial aid guidelines. The previous slide, please. Um, so next is the, um, uh, some students may just start out as a non-degree seeking student for multiple reasons, just to get their feet wet. But if you're planning to start out as a non-degree seeking student, do not do more than two classes, please. That way we have ample um, uh, support for moving those classes as long as you make a B or higher grade to your master's degree program in the future when you move to the master's degree. 
but please note that you have to submit a new application for the MS track when you're moving from non-degree to the master's track and the transfer of credits would be done after you complete at least the first term and it is prioritized uh, for students who are graduating. Say if we have students graduating in summer of 2022, those students' applications for credit transfers will be done first. So we prioritize our submissions because there are thousands of applications that go to the graduate school and we want to make sure that nothing is lost in our transaction. So we prioritize based on when you're graduating for submitting those uh, transfer of credits. Uh, the Student Disability Office is another great resource at the University of Florida. And please note, we do our very best to make sure that we accommodate whatever the needs are that is recommended by the Student's Disability Office. And however, to get that started, we need your uh, first steps that you need to go through. So every semester you need to submit the intake form to the disability office that would go through the process of reviewing what accommodation is needed and they will generate a letter to you that you would share with your respective professors and they would make those necessary arrangements for your class. So please do that as soon as you get an opportunity to do so. And the next is medical withdrawal. As I mentioned, you know, life happens uh, there may be some unexpected emergency that come up and we do recognize that. However, to do that, the first thing that we always tell our students is if anything challenging comes up, please inform your professor and our office. So we are aware of what is happening and if there are other resources that we can furnish to you to consider, we will be able to do that. But if it is something very urgent and a medical issue, they are very stringent steps that you need to follow to submit this. But if we are not aware of it because there are particular pieces of information that we have to furnish, if you do not communicate it, uh, that to us, then we may be in the dark, not knowing what is happening. And then we have to engage in further back and forth emails with you. So please, first step, if something happens, contact your professor and our office, the forensic email that you will see at the end and let us know and we will get on the ball right away. The other important thing is graduation requirements. All students have to maintain a 3.0 or higher GPA and have to be registered during the final term of graduation. So if you're a PC student, then you have to take that GMS 6971 during the last term as well. You need a minimum of six credits, the details are on our website, but you need to make sure that you're registered for thesis hours during your graduation term. And the non-TC student, depending on which term they're graduating, they need to be registered at least for two credits in summer or three credits during fall or spring if that is the graduation term, but all students must maintain the 3.0 GPA. And all those emails that would be coming out reminding you to submit your application, check things on one.uf, et cetera, would all be going to your GatorLink email, which is at mail.tfl.edu. So please, we urge you to add that to all your favorite devices, phones, laptops, iPads, uh, Android, whatever you use, please add those mail clients to your preferred devices. Um, the next is the Dean of Students Office. Um, this is where most of the resources that uh, would pertain to if you need any guidance and counseling help, that would be available here. And that is a 24 seven service. You can reach out to the counseling service for any kind of assistance that you may need. That is our care portal that uh, Dr. Sutton is pointing to. And there are other events too that go on, but most of them are for on campus, but also, the Career Resource Center is another great resource and you will uh, get a lot of emails from them as well. And that would uh, that office would help you with your uh, resume preparation, your uh, interview preparation, if you're planning to attend any jobs and so on and so forth. So that is also a great resource that you keep an eye out if you're getting an email. The one doc you have is the student portal. Look at it as your business portal that is where you can go and see your unofficial transcripts, when your tuition is due, your graduation applications. And every semester you have to go in here to clear your academic holds or any other training 
that would be required for you as a student to complete. And failure to do that would delay your registration. So please, every semester, as soon as we send that email saying, hey, you have, uh, we have opened up our registration for this particular term, please go to one.uf and check for the holes, any training. There are some trainings that you have mandates, you have to do that. So please go through that and complete it. Um, and as far as the tuition, the tuition typically would load after the uh, ad drop period, but we also have a little bit of flexibility for you guys. We do not charge any late fee or anything, and you can pay them in fixed amounts as long as it is paid at least two to three weeks prior to end of the term. So all that can be done here in your 1.UF student portal. I think that was mainly it for my presentation. And if you guys got any questions, we'll talk about it further down after the rest of the slides have completed. Thank you. We had a question in the chat, Narcy, about eligibility for being a full-time student. Um, so if you want to touch on that here. Sure. What so as I mentioned, to be a full-time student for federal financial aid, if you're planning to seek that perhaps uh, is four credits for summer, at least registered for four credits, and you should be in a degree-seeking program like a master's program, or you know, we don't offer any doctoral program, so at least the master's program. And during fall and spring, you need to be registered for six credits, that is two classes at least. We also have within the College of Medicine access to a dedicated financial aid office resource. So if you can follow that here, and that's someone who can help you directly applying for the FAFSA and any other scholarships. So this is our College of Medicine financial aid advisor. You can email her directly. And she's a great resource. If you have any questions or you have any difficulty with your financial aid, uh, please contact the College of Medicine specific office and they can be a more directed resource rather than the university wide one. So that basically wraps this up. You saw on the financial aid slide, that was my cat nutmeg. And here we have Winchester. You can see he's very excited and he is reminding you of a very, very important point, which is communicate. He loves to talk and he wants you to talk to us. We can't help you if we don't know that you're having an issue. So no matter what's going on, please communicate with us as early and as often as possible. We are always here as a resource. We want to help you succeed. So please reach out to us via email. Our academic advising and administrative team is the forensics at ahc.ufl.edu address, and you'll reach out to them for all of your academic advising needs. Program specific questions, as well as career guidance, academic advising beyond what our admin team can provide, uh, please reach out to me directly. This is my UF email address. And then questions about admission and registration comes to the masters at DCE address. Uh, please also follow us on social media. We post some fun updates, opportunities. We share some posts about ongoing um, events, conferences, job opportunities, Forensic Fact Friday. And then also do bookmark our program website because that has a lot of resources and updates. And that's where we will post any changes to course offerings, scheduling, and anything else along those lines relevant to your degree. So that concludes our online slide portion of the orientation. So now we'll open it up for questions. And I see that we have a few listed in the chat. Okay, so for those interested in attending in-person labs, what vaccinations are required and how do we submit vaccination records? Uh, we don't require vaccination records. Um, we encourage students in compliance with University of Florida guidelines to be fully vaccinated, but we do not place immunization holds on our distance education students, and that also um, applies to the in-person lab options.
Do we have any other? Okay, can we team up with other students for labs for hotels? Sure, absolutely. That's completely up to you. Um, when you come to campus for the in-person labs, if you're in Gainesville, we do have a pre-negotiated rate with one of our local hotels. It's $89 a night for the room there and they waive all the additional fees for you. So that's pretty affordable, but you are absolutely welcome to communicate with your other students and talk about sharing a room, uh, combining your travel, whatever you wanna do for cost saving is completely up to you. We can't facilitate that ourselves, unfortunately, but we do encourage students to communicate with their classmates, develop peer relationships and work together as much as you can to help bolster each other's success. Uh, as Rachel mentioned, and Rachel is one of the members of our administrative team, so you'll be corresponding with her as well. She's also a former graduate of our forensic medicine program, so she could provide a very unique perspective on the student experience and help give you some ideas of things. There's Rachel waving to everyone. So she is a graduate of our program and she can offer some uh, ideas if you're running into struggles uh, if you're having any questions she can offer you a really great student perspective so do follow our, our instagram that we have and our facebook not only for the maple center the lab dates are posted each semester on our program website this summer's lab course is the forensic photography lab and that's offered the week of june 27th we aim to always post the labs uh, at least one semester in advance so that you have ample time to plan your travel, taking time off work. Um, but we like to offer these labs in this concentrated format since it's only one week at a time. It's not too much of a burden on student schedule. In the spring and the fall, we sometimes offer more than one lab class and we try to offer those back to back. That way, if you're flying in from out of town, you only have to book one plane ticket. You can stay for two weeks. You have that fun weekend in between to spend some time exploring Florida. And then you have the opportunity to take two lab classes, get six academic credits in the span of one calendar week each class. Let's see, the VPN, yes. Um, you can absolutely do all of this overseas. You can access all of these program materials and a VPN from anywhere that you have a reliable internet connection. So there's the link there. You can find the VPN. Thank you, Rachel. You can find information about the courses and the labs. So Ashley, to your question, um, we take the in-person lab class after we take the online portion rather than a substitute. That is correct. The in-person labs are not a substitute for any of the online courses. However, you aren't required to take the online portion first. There's supplemental information and each lab class has a lecture component to it that prepares you for those hands-on activities. They're not redundant to each other in any way. It's helpful if you take the online version first, so you have a stronger foundation in the material. And this is particularly applicable for the forensic photography course, as well as the blood stain pattern analysis course. But you will not be completely lost and out of your depth if you haven't taken the online course first. You can take the lab first. And if you say, hey, I love this and I want to learn more about the theory, I wanna spend more time. And then you take the online version that's totally fine as well, but they are not substitutes for the online course. They are optional electives that you can take in addition to the online courses. Yes, as, as Marcy pointed out, you can also take them concurrently. That's, that's a perfectly fine option that is especially relevant to the lab classes that are complements to our core credits. Our crime scene investigation lab is a complement to the principles of crime scene investigation that's offered as part of our core curriculum. You absolutely can take both of those classes side by side in the same semester and be very successful. Same thing with our Artifacts of Decomposition Lab. That's a core class online, Artifacts of Decomposition, but you can take that lab class in the same semester that you're taking that core class and be very successful as well. 
If you have questions about this type of course planning, when you should take things, you can reach out, out to us at any time. You can email our advising team at the forensics email address, as well as emailing me. And we're happy to give you guidance on what we think makes the most sense for your progress through the program. Yes, um, as Narcy said, non-degree seeking students absolutely can take the lab classes. The most important thing for non-degree seeking students or students who are participating in the program um, with conditional admission is your GPA. That 3.0 minimum is a hard, completely inflexible requirement issued by the UF Graduate School, and there's no way that we can waive that. So if you are a non-degree seeking student, you have conditional admission and you're seeking full admission to the program, make sure that you're taking the recommendations of our advising team, Narcy, Rachel, and myself, to make sure that you take the classes that are gonna help you get that 3.0 or higher. And you can't take more than two classes as a non-degree seeking student. So make sure that you are communicating with us. Again, communication is key here. Yes, this is distance education. Yes, we're in all different parts of the world, but we have these fabulous technologies now. We've got Zoom, email, social media, lots of ways that we can connect and interact together to make sure we're optimizing your student experience and reassuring you that you're not alone through this process. We are here, we're here to help you. We want to see you succeed. So please reach out to us at any time. Do we have any more questions in the chat? You're also welcome to unmute your microphone, uh, turn on your video and communicate with us if you prefer to uh, discuss it that way rather than in the chat. All right, well, I'm not seeing or hearing anything else. So with that, oh, look, we're two minutes ahead of our target schedule. Look at us go. So thanks everyone for joining us today. And for those of you who are watching this recording after the fact, thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to our new student orientation. It's been my pleasure talking with you and I look forward to working with each of you as you progress through your degree. Have a fabulous day, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye.